And then after you go to the funeral house, if you got the guts, if you got the, if you're able to do so, you go to the grave. And now this is another scenario. And you say to yourself, is that it? I mean, 50, 60 years, scraping, struggling, scheming, lying, stealing, fornicating, jumping up and down, begging, working, and this is the end of it? I mean, is this what's going to happen to me? Are they going to be dropping me into a, a hole in the ground? A hole in the ground, the same hole that a cat digs after it defecates. Just a little deeper. But for the same reason. The cat digs a hole because the cat has dignity. Something that human beings don't seem to have. Instinctively, the cat digs a little hole, covers it up. Humans have got to be taught to do that. But it's for the same reason. So you and I, we're going into a hole a little deeper than the one the cat dug. Because there's a reason for humans to go inside the grave. If the Creator wanted to, He could have caused us to live and then disappear into the, into the atmosphere. But He didn't. He caused us to go into another womb called the tomb. You started out in the womb of your mother and you wind up in the womb of the earth called the tomb. From the womb to the tomb. This is the whole trip. And this is what you have to think about. That grave is going to be a place of drama and trauma. the grave will be either terrible punishment or a peace and blessing for the believer the one who is righteous this grave that we see over here will turn into a grave of fire we find for example the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam telling us about some of the punishments the people will have in the grave and so he mentions mentions to us uh, in the authentic hadith when once when Rasulullah was actually asleep and Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam and Mikail alayhi salatu wasalam uh, the two angels came to him in the, in the sleep and took him to a place and showed him a couple of people having punishments. One of them was a person who was lying down and then this angel was tearing, this man was tearing from his side to the back and then with an iron rod and then he would start with the next side and before the next side he would start, the first side would start to get healed again. And he was continuing bring this until the day of judgment. Who is this Ya Rasulullah? Who is this O oh, Jibreel? Who is this Mikael? In that hadith, they told us that this, hadith, that this refers to a person who has been punished in his grave, a person who used to backbite, a person who used to spread namima, a person who used to eat the flesh of his brother, a person who used to uh, 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 forget the sanctity of, uh, of brotherhood. Such is a person who has been punished in that way. Another person Rasulullah described was a person who was swimming in, in, in an ocean of, uh, of uh, blood and every time he would try and swim out of it, every time he would be drinking, he would be drinking the blood and be vomiting upon himself and still drowning in that blood and every time he would try and swim out of it, an angel would take a, a stone and throw it, a boulder and throw at him and then it would push him all the way to the middle of that ocean. And what is that punishment? That punishment was the, it was the punishment in the grave for a person who takes riba. A person who deals in riba, a person who writes and signs a contract on riba, a person who buys his home on riba, such is a person that is being described in this hadith, a person who deals in riba. And, another, and in the same hadith, uh, uh, Rasulullah said, and I came upon a people who were naked in, the, in, the, in, the, in this cauldron, in this uh, oven, 
and the fire was burning them from, um, um, from, from, from the ground and they were trying to cl climb up, trying to climb up. But every time they would climb up, they would fall down. Who are these people, Ya Rasulullah? They are the Zunat. They are the people who committed zina. And by Allah, we commit zina every day by either our eyes or we commit zina with our hands or we commit zina with our mind or we commit zina with our bodies. O oh, people who commit zina, lower your gaze. O oh, people who are given unto sin, lower your gaze. O oh, people who are tempted, who are tempted by women, get married. And if you cannot fast and if you cannot, then hold on, hold on for the day of judgment. Do not be impatient. Do not give unto sin. Subhanallah. This, these are some of the punishments the Rasulullah told us. And look at this punishment. I just remembered it right now. The punishment was a man would be laid down on the ground. And a big, huge boulder like a, like a mountain would be thrown upon his head that would crush him, crush his body and crush his whole face. And then it would be lifted again and his face would be formed again and then he would be crushed down again. Who is this person, Ya Rasulullah? This is a person who learned some Quran and then he forgot it. This is a person who does not read the Quran. This is what Rasulullah described in this authentic. A person who learns the Quran, then he forgot some surahs from it. A person who has the Quran in his home and he does not read it, he's neglecting it. Subhanallah. This is the punishment that Rasulullah described to us in these authentic hadith. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhaakum attakathuru hatta zurtumul maqabir. كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم. When we think about the punishment of the grave, we think it's just in the grave. In reality, it's not just the grave, it's the punishment of the hereafter. As soon as someone, someone dies, if the punishment is written for him, then the punishment will start wherever he is, whether he is buried or not buried, whether he has been lost or not, whether he has been eaten up by a wild animal or he has been burnt up by a fire. And subhanAllah, the only way, the only sure way to be safe from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from it starting as soon as you die is for you to come back to Allah. Allah says in the Quran, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى Allah, Run away from Allah to Allah. The best protection against the punishment of the grave is to carry the correct belief in the Almighty Lord, is to carry no other than La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and to avoid the major sins. However, there are specific actions that can likewise protect you from the punishment of the grave. One, martyrdom on the battlefield. Two, standing guard in the way of the Almighty Lord. Three, dying because of an abdominal disease. Four, reciting Surat Al-Mulk, Tabarak. Five, dying on the day or night of Friday. Subhanallah, The coffin that cost five thousand. I don't know what they what they what did they burn somebody the five thousand dollar coffin for? I mean, if I was a funeral director, after they left, I would dig them back up and put them in another box and take that box back. <laughs> and, and honestly, I'm telling you, that's what they do. 